if you're fully receiving this message my friend you are the one that have paid a price to hear this revelation you're looking at a person that still ended up going through the worst experiences that should have drowned me yet i was buoyed by the pure naked favor of almighty god can i go deeper let me help somebody it's like god calling you to war like the draft ministry calls you uh, the mystery keeps you your relationship with god and the mess ups besides the obvious hassle it causes gives you a new audience uh, let's look at jeremiah uh, 20 if you will real quick and i just want to give you verse one through three it says now pastor the priest the son of emir who was chief officer in the house of the Lord, heard Jeremiah prophesying these things. Then Pasher beat Jeremiah, the prophet, and put him in the stocks that were in the upper Benjamin gate of the house of the Lord. The next day, when Pasher released Jeremiah from the stocks, Jeremiah said to him, the Lord does not call your name, Pasher, but terror on every side. Now, I want you to jump down to verse 7. Jeremiah says, O oh Lord, you have deceived me. And I was deceived. You are stronger than I, and you have prevailed. I become a laughing stock all the day. Everyone mocks me. For whenever I speak, I cry out, I shout violence and destruction, for the word of the Lord has become for me a reproach and a derision all day long. If I say I will not mention him or speak any more in his name, there is in my heart, as it were, a burning fire shut up in my bones. And most of us stop there, but keep reading. And I am weary with holding it in and I cannot. For I hear many whispering, terror is on every side. Denounce him, let us denounce him say all my close friends watching for my fall perhaps he will be deceived then we can overcome him and take our revenge on him but the Lord is with me as a dread warrior therefore my persecutors will stumble they will not overcome me they will be greatly shamed for they will not succeed their eternal dishonor will never be forgotten. O oh, Lord of hosts, who tests the righteous, who sees the heart and the mind, let me see your vengeance upon them. For to you have I committed my cause. See, people see your ministries, and I've been there. They see your ministry, they see your drive, your passion, your convictions that make and keep you passionate. They, they see the charisma, the influence, the favor. Come on, let's talk. The clothes. They see the following. Being on the road, eating out with well-known people, rubbing shoulders with the elite in the gospel world. The powerful words, even the fulfillment of prophetic words. You laying hands, uh, the healings, notable miracles. People falling out under the power of God. I'm being real because some of us are treated like rock stars. But many times, until it's of popular opinion, they don't really see your mess ups. Not with empathy anyway. They don't see your marriages on the rocks or that your family ain't perfect or that your children act like they're losing their minds or that you have trust issues because of being used or that your health and your body is going through changes and weight gain and you got bad habits and you're preaching sick or that you're still trying to figure out your identity or even who you are. I mean, outside of preaching. Because truth is, outside of church and what we do for and in church, we don't have a clue many times of who we really are. And that's crucial. And they definitely, definitely don't see 
the mystery of the grace of God that's keeping you many times from having vivid open visions and revelations about people you come in contact with and that are around you that you can never share. I'm talking to the real prophets. Or that you're having divine encounters and demonic turbulence in your sleep and spiritual warfare and it takes a toll on your mind and your body and prayer and physically and psychologically or that you're in pain or heartache or struggles and tears bring your most powerful books and messages all the while you're constantly being wooed and drawn by the Lord to come to the next level of obedience in your relationship and call and for some of us the next call that you really are reluctant to do or don't even fully understand hello who am I talking to I know you've been waiting on somebody to say it. Look at Dave, Daniel, faithful, has divine encounters, devout, but still a eunuch thrown in a lion's den. Or Ezekiel, a priest, a watchman for Israel, but put on many public displays of embarrassment on account of the word of the Lord, walking naked, eating dung, losing your wife and, and death, and God says you still can't cry. But God told me to tell you, hold on. Your help is here. And you and the people you preach to will live again. Did you hear me? How many need that word? God has an army of bones that he's about to quicken on behalf of your nation and its need. Your nation can be anything, your church, your business, your ministry, your family, whatever God says is revelation to you today. That is resurrection time for you. I want you to know wherever you are, whoever you are, whatever way you get this that God has not forgotten about you and that his grace is sufficient it's enough and it will get you through and bring you out and over I prophesy for you to come forth to live and to arise my love Arise, my bride. You can come without money. You can come and buy without price. Come forth.